Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, a crackdown on Chinese influence in Indiana, the Hoosier state becoming the first to ban sister city agreements with China. Why experts call those deals Beijing's soft power tools to influence American policymakers. Washington's top diplomat sending a warning to China tied to possible consequences if Beijing chose to launch an armed attack against Filipino vessels. American children using an education and tutoring app owned by China, and the platform has a contract with the Pentagon. Is it safe? And what are the rising concerns? So if one thing is happening with TikTok, it almost certainly is happening with Tutor.com as well. And Beijing's first diplomatic talks with Hamas since the group launched deadly attacks on Israel. What did the two sides talk about? A first in America, Indiana is cracking down on sister city relations with adversaries like China, passing a law last week to ban its own cities from taking part. The agreements are designed to enhance cultural and economic exchange between countries. The U.S. has signed over 100 such deals with China since 2008. Under them, U.S. officials went on trips to China and Chinese companies invested in the U.S., though some of those deals come with strings attached. China has required some of its American sister cities to agree with China's stance on a sensitive issue. Beijing's belief that Taiwan is part of China. The Chinese Communist Party sees Taiwan as part of its territory, despite never having ruled it. The U.S. acknowledges Beijing's viewpoint, but does not endorse it. State Representative Mitch Gore spearheaded the Indiana legislation. He said the sister city's agreement is a way for Beijing to exert soft power and influence American policymakers. Indiana's ban is set to take effect this July. Though it remains unclear if it would affect existing agreements, Indiana has 19 sister city agreements with China. Congressman Jim Banks applauded the law in a statement he said sister city agreements are managed by Beijing's overseas influence arm called the United Front. This agency builds relationships with local and state officials through cultural and economic deals with the goal of manipulating these officials to serve China's interests. And Mary Brady is an expert on Chinese influence operations. She told the Washington Post that Beijing's efforts to cultivate local networks are far-reaching. That's because those local officials may take up more influential positions later on. Congressman Banks also called out a Chinese proxy group in his statement. It's called the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries. The U.S. State Department designated this group as a Chinese influence operation. This Chinese group said it invited California Governor Gavin Newsom on a trip to China last year. Also in 2023, six U.S. mayors traveled to cities in China. They came from Minnesota, Indiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Missouri. They test drove the latest electric vehicles and drank China's famous liquor. Kim Norton, mayor of North Rochester, Minnesota, was one of them. She said she was impressed by China's high-speed trains. After the trip, she reportedly asked the U.S. Transportation Secretary if America could partner with China adding she wished there was a way to bridge the situation and have a better partnership. NTD reached out to Norton's office for comment but did not hear back before airtime. A warning from America's top diplomat to China, Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned Beijing Tuesday that an armed attack against Filipino vessels would trigger a response from the U.S. Important to note, a high-level treaty between the U.S. and the Philippines mandates that the nations must defend each other in the event of an attack. The remark follows Beijing's aggressive actions in the South China Sea. Chinese vessels recently fired water cannons and rammed Filipino boats to prevent them from supplying troops stationed on an island both countries claim. These waterways are critical to the Philippines, to its security, to its economy, but they're also critical to the interests of uh, the region, uh, the United States, uh, and the world. Uh, It's why we stand with the Philippines uh, and stand by our ironclad defense commitments including under the Mutual Defense Treaty. In response to Blinken's statement, China said it would take any necessary actions to defend its territory. The Secretary of State's visit comes on the heels of U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo's. 
Last week, Raimondo went to Manila and said the U.S. plans to invest $1 billion in the Philippines' tech sector. That's as the U.S. looks to diversify its global semiconductor supply chains and cut reliance on Chinese manufacturing. Defend territory without poking the bear. As Beijing ramps up assertions in the South China Sea, the president of the Philippines says his country could invoke a U.S. defense treaty, noting it would only happen if his country was facing a, quote, existential threat. We do this because we feel that we have to do it. And it's not at the behest or at the, of the United States. In an interview with Bloomberg Television, Marcos said the Philippines is trying to keep things on an even keel. The country has a decades-long mutual defense treaty with the U.S. Marcos said he is not looking forward to invoking that treaty. He added that a violent conflict wouldn't serve the island's national interest. Beijing claims a large swath of the South China Sea as part of its own territory and has deployed its military forces to circle the region. That's despite a United Nations tribunal denying China's claim in 2016. A recent report finds that education platform Tutor.com is owned by a Hong Kong company and has close ties to the Chinese communist regime. At the same time, it has a contract with the Pentagon. What does the fine mean for data security? For more on the story, we spoke with Nikki Neely, founder and president of Parents Defending Education, the organization that released the report. Nikki Neely, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, you are the founder and president of Parents Defending Education. Recently, you released a report that found at least 100 school districts across the nation give students access to Tutor.com, which is owned by Primavera and has ties to the Chinese regime. Now, what are the concerns here? Sure. I think the concerns here are much like the concerns that we've seen over TikTok. Um, First and foremost is that the American public, families, and largely school districts are not aware that this has been purchased by a Chinese-owned company. Um, And as the Daily Caller um, just released an investigation, the um, Primavera Holdings has very close ties to the Chinese Communist Party. And so, again, with TikTok, we have been told over and over again by their parent company, ByteDance, um, that that information is not flowing back and forth, whereas whistleblowers in the U.S. have said, "Mm, actually, maybe it is. And so I think One concern is that we don't really know what's taking place. And another concern is that Primavera Holdings actually is affiliated with ByteDance. Um, It's kind of the the parent company of that. And so if one thing is happening with TikTok, it almost certainly is happening with Tutor.com as well. On that note, we do know that under Chinese law or under the Chinese Communist Party's law, if they ask for data from a company, the company has to hand it over. Given that, what are the dangers of these foreign-owned companies, especially when it comes to that data of our children? Sure. I think one concern is that the school districts are collecting a vast amount of information. And so if this application is on students' iPads, students' computers, what do they have access to? Um, aside from the personal information, the IP addresses, um, the uh, just the additional data that schools are collecting on a regular basis. Parents are concerned about the surveys that are taking place, um, asking kids about political involvement. Um, a lot of, you know, DODEA, the Department of Defense Education Agency, uses tutor.com. But um, as you as you mentioned earlier, um, over 100 school districts across the country are also using this. And so information about student achievement as well as student locations and largely, you know, personal information as well also can be gathered and then sent back. Right now we are seeing in Congress the bill to get TikTok to divest from its Chinese parent company ByteDance over similar concerns to this. What should be the next step when it comes to Tutor.com and the concerns around Primavera? Sure. Well, with regards to um, even the Little Red Classroom study that we um, that we released last year, we contact the state superintendents in 34 states and D.C. asking them to investigate whether Um, you know, what has been taking place. Um, As we have seen concerns being raised in Congress over the past several months um, about malware being put on uh, energy servers, has similar malware been put on education servers? Um, Will those, you know, can those utilities be shut down or can our education system be shut down? Um, Sadly, we have not heard much back from state superintendents, which is a subject of concern. And so this is something that we're going to continue to urge both state and federal officials to look into to A, get a handle around the scope of this, and B, if this is truly an intelligence gathering operation, then to shut it down. You know, why the the fact that the TikTok bill is so narrowly targeted at TikTok, you know, I think maybe we should be looking bigger at um, essential companies being owned by foreign, hostile foreign countries. Nikki Neely, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.
China sets up the first known diplomatic engagement with Hamas. The country's foreign ministry confirmed on Tuesday that its special envoy met with a Hamas political leader in Qatar over the weekend. The ministry said the two exchanged views on what's happening in Gaza, but didn't give details. Hamas stated that its political leader urged the Israeli military to, in his words, stop massacres and to withdraw from Gaza. The Chinese envoy also traveled to Israel and the West Bank ahead of his meetings with Hamas, making him the first Chinese envoy to visit either location since the war began last year. On Monday, White House senior official Jake Sullivan confirmed that Israel killed Hamas's number three commander in an airstrike last week and killed thousands of Hamas fighters. The White House and the Israeli government have repeatedly called on the Chinese Communist Party to use its network to cool down the war and to condemn Hamas. Beijing has not condemned the terrorist group. On October 7th, Hamas entered Israel and launched deadly attacks, killing over 1,200 people. At least 250 people were taken hostage. Israel vowed to eliminate the Hamas terrorists soon after as a means of self-defense. You might have noticed how Top Gun Maverick attempted to strip the Taiwanese and Japanese flags off of Tom Cruise's jacket, or how Iron Man 3 inserted a Chinese doctor into the movie who saves the life of Tony Stark. Is it artistic license or something more sinister? These are the issues explored in the groundbreaking new documentary Hollywood Takeover, China's Control in the Film Industry. The NTD original film pulls back the curtain on how Hollywood is helping to further a global adversary's agenda, the consequences that will have on America's future, and what brave individuals are doing to change the tide. The documentary is now available to stream on Epic TV. And for more information about the documentary, please visit HollywoodTakeover.com. There's something magical about the movies that I just love. Hollywood invented America to the world in the old days. And as a medium, it's really powerful. But for some, that power isn't used for good. Our way of life is being censored by the Chinese Communist Party. They said, we get a lot of our money out of China. Is there any way you could make this movie a little bit more attractive to the Chinese? Is it really just about money? Are there other parts at stake? I had friends in Hollywood who said, this will kill your career. You won't get funding. They're afraid of even mentioning one line. Chinese influence was playing into what we see in U.S. films. China said, you can't have that in there. And Hollywood listened. This is insane. This is a joke, right? We raised our hand and we dove right into it. But over time, all of us have been punched in the nose. The Chinese Communist Party followed no rules. What's at stake? The soul of the nation is at stake. We want indoctrination access to America. They could basically take over America without firing a shot because they control access to our minds. And we all know that their goal is global domination. People have been brainwashed without knowing it. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. Recently, ads have reappeared on our YouTube channel, but we have not received any ad revenue from them. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. An unexpected source of propaganda from the Chinese Communist Party, lawmakers are calling for an investigation into a U.S. government official for coercing and intimidating U.S. citizens. And bumps in the road for China's energy sector, from plunging coal output to major, major layoffs inside a solar energy giant. More on what's happening and how it impacts the U.S. after the break here on China in Focus. For round the clock original news coverage, visit us at ntd.com or download our NTD app. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.